God bless America. Thank you so much. First and foremost, a special thanks to all the professional boxers competing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we have five professional boxing fights. Two fights which are championship fights. Ladies and gentlemen, just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to put on a boxing promotion like this. For that, we can only say thank you to the School of Hard Knocks Promotion, Isidro and Mayra Castillo of Hobbs, New Mexico. We also like to recognize investors such as LL Consultant, Lily Sanchez, MSFT Promotions, Brenda Aguilar. Also, a special thanks goes out to the New Mexico Athletic Commission, such as the Executive Director, Mr. Richard Espinosa. <laughs> Commissioner in charge, Mr. Jerome O'Connell. Chairman, Mr. Joe Chavez. Commissioner, Art De La Cruz. Commissioner, Ms. Vera Bustos. Ladies and gentlemen, a special thanks also to the following sponsors, such as BPW Construction, Mr. Angel Wilson, MHG Homes, Mr. Bruce McDonnell, Nova Builders, Mr. Joshua Cross, Zia Mat Martial Arts. A big shout out goes also to the people who helped out Zen Martial Arts. And lastly, we'd like to wish also an investor, Lily Sanchez's father, Mr. Mario Sanchez, a happy 70th birthday. A big thank you goes also out to the Hooters for allowing us to have the weigh-ins yesterday, Mr. Mark Graves. Thank you, Mark. Joining us as the boxing ring card girls, none other than Adriana Salido. Madison Cross. And Miss Kelsey Davidson. We also like to thank Ms. the video photographer, Corey King and his athlete and me, which you see on your screen. DJ Coda, thank you, Mr. Joe Acosta. Media, Mr. David Finger with Fight Not Fight News. El Paso Times, we recognize Felix Chavez, along with the Las Cruces Sun News, Nathan Fish. A special thanks goes out also to Mr. Daniel Melise with the Pan American and the City of Las Cruces, New Mexico and El Paso. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have made my rounds throughout the dressing room, and I have looked into the boxers' eyes. They tell me one thing, they are ready. The question is, Las Cruces, El Paso, Ciudad Juarez, and surrounding areas, are you ready? Make some noise, are you ready? Then, without further ado, let the first match begin! Freddie Sandball entered the ring. I talked to him. And like I said, he was brutally honest. 
I loved it. I love talking to him because when I asked him, are you in shape? He said, ah, yeah, sort of. So, I mean, he was, you know, pretty straightforward. He had, he's not a boxer. He admitted as much. He's got a great MMA background, though. Uh, he's, he's a personal fitness trainer, so he is in some shape. He also admitted that he's coming in uh, to his fight off the cold, so... I really don't know what to expect. This is kind of a mystery fight for me. This is like when you order a mystery uh, mystery box off wish.com. You don't know what you're going to get. I really don't know what we're going to get here, but this this looks like it's going to be an interesting fight. I will say this, though. Freddy Sandball looks pretty intimidating. He looks to be a great fit. He does. Very well built. He looks solid. I can't, can't wait to see what he looks like when he starts uh, throwing the pads. I've had the, the good fortune to trade with Mikey for a lot of before in the past. The dude is a workhorse, man. Nobody can deny that. Um, the guy's always training, always running, always working on uh, boxing, MMA. So for this one, it's, it's exciting to see him in the ring. Um, a little bit in the element because I know he started off boxing. Freddie Sandoval and Mike Tovar, the first fight of the night. Our main event, of course, Dwayne Bonds and Derek Perez will be coming, be coming up later tonight. This, though, is a heavyweight fight, just barely. Mikey Tovar weighed in at uh, 95.8. Freddie Sandoval weighed in at just over 200 pounds. Don't know much about either fighter. I've talked to both of them. It's going to be this is going to be a mystery fight. We're going to we may see we may see an absolute brawl. We may see two guys who. A little rusty around the edges, but so far, it's looking pretty good. And this is their first professional fight. Both fighters making their uh, pro debut here, and, and got to have a lot of a lot of nervousness when you're making your pro debut, Absolutely. regardless of if it's a if it's a, a small show, regardless if it's against another debuter, regardless if it's against a friend. It's, it's tough to fight in your pro debut. You, how long does it take, do you think, uh, for those cobwebs to kind of shake? You know, that's, that's a subjective answer, I, if I'm being honest. It, every fighter, every person is different, you know. Um, we're all waiting for that one moment to shine, so hopefully, uh, you know, these guys can let it all out there, win, lose, or draw, and just put on a show for the crowd. Uh, you know, Sandoval's looking pretty assertive right now, sticking out that jab pretty good. Uh, but Mike is not backing down. He seems to be ready, trying to counter, counter strike a little bit. So, so far, this is the short time it's been going on. There's a lot of action. That was a good left jab from from Mike Tobar. He looks to be a pretty, he looks to be a pretty well-rounded fighter. He boxes well. I like his jab. Sandoval, very aggressive, uh, an aggressive fighter, and awkward, extremely awkward. You can see that yeah. from here, but. Uh, the question is, can he keep up this pace? Because as we talked about in your pro debut, you sometimes burn yourself out a little bit. You get a little overexcited. And and Sandoval is already starting to look like he's slowing down just a little bit. And for a guy who kind of admitted he wasn't in the best of shape going into this fight, that, that may be problems as we go into the later rounds for him. That's, that's a very true point. I know he took this fight on last notice, uh, very, very short notice, last minute. Um, We'll see. It's interesting to see if he's just trying to swing for the fence right away because he knows he might not have that much in the gas tank, or who knows? Maybe he could have just been saying that, and he has been in the gyms on a regular basis. Um, right now, it's still looking good on both fighters. He, uh, Sandoval does look like he appears to be the more active fighter, but it, he did just show a sign right now that he looked a little bit fatigued, so we'll see. So far, being the patient fighter, he's starting to turn it up right now. He might smell blood. And I think that's very much the case. He's he's starting to slowly turn up the temperature. I can I can see that. Both fighters look like they've got relatively solid fundamentals as as Sandoval now goes and fights out of the orthodox stance. But I will say that Sandoval looks a little looks a shade uh, slower than Tovar, and uh, he, I think that that jab is 
a little a little bit slow and it's it's definitely setting up for an overhand right over the top of it. Tovar is definitely starting to look a little bit more loose, more comfortable. You can see the confidence in his demeanor and that's that's always a dangerous side from a fighter. Well, the first round is coming to a close. I think it's a pretty solid round for Mikey Tovar, but certainly uh, Freddie Sandoval is Freddie Sandoval made a fight of it in this round, for round one. It's a, it was a close first round, but I think that that as the round came to a close, Mikey Tovar took control of the round. I would give that first round to Mikey Tovar. I totally agree with you right there, David. Mikey Tovar looked like he was uh, he gained control towards the end and was kind of walking him down a little bit. So yeah, I'd have to give a uh, one round to Zip to Tovar. You know, I just this this has been on this has been on TV for uh, or this has been on like Netflix or Hulu for like two years, and I finally just got around to watching it. You ever see the Last Dance with the Chicago Bulls that last season? Yes, of Chicago Bulls? yes, great show, great, great, great docu series. Great docu series, yeah. And one of the things they talked about there was how Michael Jordan talked about how he went from baseball. He played that one year of baseball. And then when the baseball strike happened, he just kind of ended up back in back with the Bulls. And it took him a while to, to, it was a different kind of in shape for baseball than it was for basketball. And as an MMA fighter, how, how does that impact, how does that relate to boxing? I mean, is it a different kind of in shape for, for boxing? Uh, than, than MMA, or is it fairly similar? I mean, honestly, I, I can't speak to the boxing realm. I've never boxed amateur or professional. Now, I do train boxing, but I haven't competed in that in that realm at all. I will say that the best shape that I've ever gotten in is when I'm competing in full MMA, MMA sparring, MMA training, drilling, uh, and the times when I just throw on just boxing gloves and we're just working boxing in the gym, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit like a sense of relief, like, okay, you know, I just gotta focus on this hand, three minute round, so. Right. But I'm sure it possesses several, several cha challenges in its own right, so. Well, I, the reason I ask is because both these fighters have an MMA background, but Freddie Sandoval, I was told by promoter Isidro Castillo, had a, a very impressive a, uh, MMA career early in his er, early in his life. Before he was out for 12 years, he was uh, actually in prison for 12 years. Just got out and is now is now back in uh, uh, is now boxing. And it looks like we have a low blow here. Yeah. And we're taking a taking a break here, but. Freddie Sandoval said he has never uh, he's never boxed before. He, this is his first boxing, and, and when I asked him how how much boxing oh, he did, nice, nice right hand, overhand right counter from uh, Sandoval, how oh. pushed Mikey off a little bit. I don't know if it hurt him, but it definitely caught his attention. And it, I don't think it really hurt him, but it definitely caught his uh, his feet weren't under him. Yeah, and it it was splashy. It looked good to the judges, I'm sure. And Sandoval letting him know that he's there. But I was just saying, uh, Sandoval said he's never trained in boxing. You know, he's, he's got no background in boxing. He's an MMA fighter, but he's a darn good one. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see here because really, to be honest, he's actually very much holding his own right here. I'd like to see a little bit more snap on that jab, but he's putting a lot of pressure on Tovar, and he's certainly keeping Tovar on, on, on his toes. He's certainly not letting Tovar get get cocky or run away with this. Yeah, this true, yeah. I'll be honest, at the end of that first round, I kind of started thinking that maybe maybe Tovar was going to uh, dial it up and take control of this fight. That's not what we're seeing in the second round. Good right hand from Tovar. Tovar and a good body attack. Strong. He's establishing a little bit of the size difference right now. Letting him know he's a bigger, stronger fighter. And Sandoval went for that right hand again. He found some luck with it earlier in the round. He went for it again, uh, came up a little short, but I think that right hand is a good weapon for him. But, you know, as soon as I said that Sandoval uh, was coming back, it's starting to look fatigued yeah. again. And you can kind of see it in his body language a little bit. I will say this, though. Sandoval, for a guy who's got no boxing, uh, no boxing background, he's, he's He's looking pretty solid. He might want to consider uh, going to a boxing gym and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and and doing a little bit of work in boxing because I think there might be a there might be a knockdown. He's definitely holding his own. Again, short notice fight. He looks good to me. It does look like maybe he, he's just a little bit out of shape. I want to say, but who knows? I mean, well, he got dropped by that right hand combination right at the bell. Again, I agree with you. It looks like fatigue is really taking a toll on him. 
And Mikey Tovar is a tough, tough individual too, man. Getting hit by that guy, I'm sure, is not a pleasant feat, so. Well, I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen so far of Mikey Tovar. He's a good, good young, good young fighter. He's, he does a lot of things right. I would, I would say he's a little bit of a, uh, He's, he's definitely a work in prog progress. I mean, he's, he's got a lot of talent here. I wouldn't throw him in with the Wolves yet. I can see some areas, and I'm sure his coach is going to look at this and say, hey, here's some things we can work on Absolutely. And, and polish and get better as we go along. But so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think any good coach, any good athlete can always recognize there's always a takeaway, you know, right. whether you win or you lose. And having that good coach in your corner to be able to tell you that because it's sometimes hard to hear because a fighter already i mean most fighters will say i'm ready for anybody i'll yeah. take on anybody that you put in front of me and uh it's it, you have to have that coach in there to say okay we're going to take this a little slower than you want but right now i like tovar described himself as a boxer puncher and i think that's a real accurate description i like his jab he moves well i definitely see him picking his shots a lot more too right bit of a sniper look and one thing that's interesting about Sandoval is uh, he may not be in boxing shape per se but he does look like he's in condition uh, in, in general condition because at the beginning of every round he looks like he's you know he's somewhat recovered at the beginning of every round his, his punch output goes up you know sometimes you see a fighter they get fatigued and they they, they, they fall on the on the stool in, in between rounds and then they have to get you know, they barely can pull themselves off that stool at the end of, end of that one-minute break. And Sandoval, he'd give them a one-minute break, and it's like he completely reset yeah. the reset the uh, reset the clock on it. But but he, right, he, he can't keep that again. pressure up for three three minutes. It appears, and right now we're starting to see see uh, Tovar pick it up again and start to start to find a home for those heavy shots upstairs. Sandoval's definitely game. I mean, this kid came to fight for sure. He's not backing down one bit. At the beginning of every round, he seems to be going forward on the bigger, stronger opponent. Unfortunately, you know, Mikey Kovat is just a savage, so. Another knockdown. Yeah, and he's showing his heart right now. He's done. Go for it. And you know the thing is, you can see it in his face. He's breathing heavily. Yep. His, his body language yep. shows that he's very fatigued. And look, he's not backing down. He's throwing out jabs. He's coming forward. He's not. He's, he's not so much on the back foot so much. And that is one of the smart things he's doing. He's resting behind his jab. He recognizes that you know a lot of fighters when they get tired, they just want to raise their arms and hit the ground. But. Or, cover up but he was jabbing well but that body shot took him down again that's a second knockdown of the round I don't know how hurt these shots how hurt he was from these shots a lot of this I think is fatigue but yeah. Tovar is is doing everything he has to do and he's putting his punches together beautifully Tovar is doing a great job right now well once you're fatigued the shots do take a more they take more of a toll too so your that's body, true your body's already where it's decreased and right there, it's that depleted. was a shot. That yeah. was a shot that was blocked that was just, and it took that was him just down. Just stop it. Yeah. I mean, look, he, he's a little bit upset. I'm sure he wanted to go out on the shield. The dude came to fight. Sandoval, for sure, is a warrior. He, he should not be ashamed of, of this bout tonight. Took it on short, short notice, last minute call. One one day notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This dude is a is a stud for sure, man. Yeah, he's a tough guy, but you know the, the fatigue was a factor, and that last shot was blocked, and he went yeah. down. That, that's one of those things that a referee, you're, you're, you're kind of tying the referee's hands there. I yeah, mean, you know. that, that at the end of the day, the ref job is to protect the fighters. They're, they specify that in the fighters meeting in the back. So, um, I mean, happy for Tovar, man. Tovar is, is he's such a talented individual. I'm glad to see him get this W tonight. And we're going to get the official announcement here as well as the time. And again, Mikey Tovar sure with a TKO over the very game, Freddie Sandoval, who took the fight on one day's notice and, and he's brought a lot of fans here you can hear him cheering yeah. Tovar and very excited for his uh for his performance definitely the hometown fighter Well, the official time, 2.28 of round three. And again, I think that was a great pro debut for Mikey Tovar.
Which and way to go see the doctor? It certainly okay. was. Certainly was. Um, he came out and enforced, you know, what what I what I thought is his game plan. What I think is his game plan. He looked good, man. Oh, no, he, he, I, I think he took like one up. solid <laughs> shot that kind of didn't buckle him, but did step him back a little bit. But other than that, he addressed that right away, and he was pretty much an enforcer, enforcer there tonight. Really good. Really good. Let's hear what Mikey Tobar has to say about his win here. Tovar, again, winner by TKO in round three. And, you know, Ivan, the thing uh, about a pro debut, when you see a fighter making his pro debut uh, on a show, especially against another debuter, you usually don't know if after that fight, if that fighter is going to end up being a, a world champion. You don't realize, you don't, you can't tell from that one fight if we're looking at a future contender or a future uh, a world champion. But you can usually tell if we're not looking at a future world champion. And I will say this, I, you know, we can't really, can't make a whole lot of uh, assumptions right now about Tovar, but I can say this, uh, I can't say for, I can't say we're not looking at a future world champion as we watch him walk out of the ring. He did a lot of things right in that uh, in that fight. He did a lot of uh, a lot of things very well, and uh, I'd like to see his career continue to develop. I think you know we can we can as as his career develops, as he takes on tougher opposition, I think we're going to learn a lot about him, and we're going to uh, see a fighter who I think is going to be very exciting here in the Southwest. I think he's got a very very bright future. He's so talented, and like I said, if you follow him on any sort of social media, which you should, um, <laughs> man, this guy, he's always working. So, again, so happy for him. You want to see him get this W. And, yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that we're going to see him in, under those bright lights.
look at David is boxing, uh, uh, fighter body language, demeanor, and stuff like that. I gotta say, obviously, Salina looks jacked. She's pumped up. She looks ready. She looks eager, confident and eager. And India is just a little bit more calm, more reserved. I don't know if that's how she is all the time. Uh, from someone who doesn't know, I would say maybe she looks hesitant or nervous. That's just what I'm saying, though. But she also just looks, I guess, hyper-focused is the word I should have used. But I definitely like the body language from Salina. She looks, again, she just wants to get in there, wants to put hands on her already. You know, you talk about body language, and you know the thing about India Smith that's that's interesting is, again, she's had six fights. They're very close fights. She's never fought in her hometown, though. She is a, an absolute road warrior. She's always fighting in the other fighter's hometown. She's doing it here again today. Maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, maybe the recognition when you're in somebody else's hometown that uh, that uh, the crowd's not behind you. Yeah, but that's impressive, though. That's impressive, like you said, very she's a road warrior. We'll see what happens as soon as they touch each other. That's when you'll really tell who's who. Well, again, an impressive win for Selena Skier can really put her on a fast track to a world title fight. Nice. She, and, hey, there you go. She's coming out with fire. And India Smith said she was going to take this out of the judges' hands and make sure that there was absolutely no question about it. And you can see that in her performance here. She she caught Amy Salinas with the right hand, and Amy Salinas backs into the rope. She looks a little bit stunned. India Again. is coming out with bad intentions right off the bat. She is. Definitely made me retract my previous statement. She <laughs> is coming here with bad intentions. Came out swinging. Selena has a chin on her, though. Took a lot of hard shots, and she is right there. And she is. And, you know, the interesting thing is India Smith scored a knockout over Lili uh, Liana Martinez in her in her uh, professional debut. And Martinez went six rounds with Amy Salinas. So she's got some power. I mean, uh, like you said, it, you can't really say, well, fighter A beat fighter B and exactly. fighter B fight, uh, beat fighter C. So, therefore, fighter A will always beat fighter C. But it, it does show that India Smith is well matched in this fight. It does show that. She's not, not the kind of fighter who's going to get hit and then look for a soft spot on the canvas to collect your paycheck. Definitely. She is, she's coming with like five pieces at a time. And women's boxing are two-minute rounds, so, you know, this is a, this is a pretty fast pace, but it may, this may be something that she can keep up for a couple rounds because, I mean, we're looking at a six-round fight, and if she can steal a couple of these rounds... Keep up this pace for a couple of rounds. There you go. She may take that out of the judges' hands. I mean, it may, it may not be up for up for up for grabs, but Salinas has weathered the storm pretty well, and she's coming back with some good shots of her own. So she definitely looks calm and collected. But right now, the firepower and the intensity and just the volume is going to India Smith for sure. For sure, Salinas is right there. Well, what do you think Amy's corner is telling her right now after that? After that. Somewhat scary first round. You know what? Honestly, just, just relax. Just relax. Calm down. We expected this. Very good. She never, she never got thumped. She never got stumbled or anything like that. So you weathered that storm. Is is basically the philosophy that I would try to implement between that short, uh, the short uh, rest before the next round. Because she did. That's the takeaway. She took a lot of her shots. She took all her shots. So, and she was in there. She didn't get up focused on what she was trying to do. So round two coming up. Keep doing what you're doing. Hands up and down elbows in. Let's get to work. And that's a good point because India Smith landed a beautiful right hand in that first flurry in the first round. And it did push Salinas back into the ropes. But it didn't ro it didn't rock her. She didn't take a knee. She didn't get dropped. She didn't get seriously hurt. She took that one shot and she was able to weather that storm. So that's that true. is something that she's taken away from that first round. India Smith's corner, I would say, keep doing what you're doing. You're looking good. 
This is very, very formidable. I will say this though, Smith, we're waiting for the fight to start. They're, they're trying to wipe up some water in Salinas' corner, and Smith was just there waiting to, to start the fight, but I saw her breathing heavy, and that was okay. after the one-minute break, so I'm wondering if maybe this pace isn't something she can keep up for six strong rounds. Only time will tell. Right now, she's looking good still. She's looking very good right now. Salinas is looking for some counter shots. She did get a nice left hand in there. But the volume punching, like you said, India Smith is just keeping that volume, yep. that volume of punches. Uh, it's her very intensity. It her is intensity here. is unmatched right now. Good body shot from Salinas. Smith is starting to show maybe the first signs of slowing down a little bit. Or possibly. And she must have heard us because she's she's now yep. she picked it back up. up, picked it back up, and throwing some heavy shots inside. Smith is doing really good when she keeps the distance inside. When she basically yes. is right she's on. She's rolling. Yeah, she's rolling is what she's doing. Salinas needs to take a step back, utilize that jab more. I'd like to see her utilize that jab more because right now on the inside, it's just it's not going her way. She needs to just get a little bit on the back foot and just pick those shots, pop shots, pop shots. One thing I do like from Salinas is she's she's just digging in with that left hook to the body. Yes. And if India Smith is starting to slow down, those body shots are going to pay huge dividends in the next round or two. Absolutely. And that seems to be Amy Salinas' go-to punch. And that's not a flashy punch. That's not something that, that gets the crowd excited. But that's a that's a punch that will really wear your opponent down. So maybe maybe that's what she was told in her corner. But Salinas is right there in her face, though. No matter what, all the shots she's taking, she's right there with her. And that's got to do something to you as a fighter, too. That's true. But I'm wondering if Salinas is not trying to box as much and instead going with that body attack. I guess time will tell on this, but yeah. that was a good round. But I still think India Smith might have pulled it off. Same here. I, I gave it to India Smith. Salinas is a tough, tough, tough little cookie, man. She is She's a ball of fury. She's... Well, this comes to, you know, this is the dangerous part of a fight. When you're talking about a six-rounder, a four-rounder, or a six-rounder, you know, you can't, you, if you're two rounds in the hole, you're in, in a very dangerous place. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Amy Salinas basically has to pitch a shutout from this point on exactly. to win the fight. Anything less, we could be looking at a draw or a loss. Very less wiggle room, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so she's really going to, I mean, those body shots are great. They pay off long term, but... She may not have enough time to cash that check. She may need to start boxing and start finding a way to, to keep India Smith off of her and keep that pressure, keep that pressure off of her. What props to her, man. You know, again, the takeaways that I see there is that, look, you're taking her shots. You're walking her down little by little. Not walking her down, but you're right there in her face, even though she's coming as forward as she's coming. Little audio problem there, but didn't affect the fighters at all. I just wouldn't want to see her brawl with her. I want to see her box more. And, you know, maybe India Smith is taking that, that decision out of her. There you go. <laughs> out, out of her. Nice, nice sniper right hand that Salinas threw right there. And right here, this is a good distance for Salinas. I'd like to see her throw the jab here. I did see her land a nice jab right before that right hand. She really does favor that hook, David, that you were talking about. Yeah. Salinas does. Now the one problem is when you dig that left hook into the body, you leave yourself open for the counter upstairs, yep. and, and Smith did get one in there. She's catching that right away. Smith is still right on Salinas. This is a phone booth war. I mean, these two fighters could be in a phone booth, but somebody lost the mouthpiece. Got a mouthpiece out. Rocky Burke gets the mouthpiece, and uh, it looks like it's India Smith who lost the mouthpiece. That probably benefits Amy Salinas, to be honest. Honestly, yes. And India Smith on the outside. This is this is, this is where I would start getting worried. And there was a that was a trip. Called a knockdown. That was a trip. Called a slip. Yep. 
But this is where I'd be worried. Look at that distance between the two fighters. This is where Selena should be popping that jab. She really should. And she's not. And that's what's that. If I were Salinas in Salinas' corner, I'd be extremely worried about that because right now we're looking at possibly another Smith round. And where Smith is giving Salinas that opening, Salinas hasn't taken it yet. Well, we talked about India Smith being a road warrior, and she showed it here today. She is in Las Cruces, New Mexico, hometown of Amy Salinas. Came out from Dallas, Texas, and she is really giving it to the undefeated local prospect here. Yeah, she came to fight, that's for sure. Like I said, every fighter is waiting. Every fighter is waiting for that one moment, that one night. That's all they need is to showcase their skills, regardless of the record. Well, again, I'd have to ask, what do you tell Amy Salinas now? I, you're, you're in a, we're in a dangerous place for Amy Salinas. Uh, we're in a place where it, it may, there may need to be a knockdown to, to score the win. I mean, do you try and go for that knockdown? Do you try and try and get her to go back to that jab that's worked well for her in the past? Do you tell her to double down on that those body shots and see if maybe India Smith uh, runs out of gas? Because when you look at India Smith in the corner, her, her elbows are on the rope. She's breathing pretty heavy. Maybe she won't be able to keep this up. I mean, I said that after round one, and she got me eating crow after round three. So what are we I'm halfway through the fight? We're halfway through halfway the fight. Halfway through the fight. You're right, David. I mean, what, what do you tell a fighter? She really, is, without, a, without a doubt, these next three have to be hers, and she has to win the hearts of the judges if it goes decision. It's got to be at least 110-8 in there. But again, I, I want to see her box more. She needs to start boxing more. Well, I sometimes keep a scorecard, and I try and picture, like, what I think the scorecard is and what it theoretically could be if the other fighter got every benefit of the doubt. I mean, you, you theoretically, this could be a closer fight uh, with, that being, with that in mind. I mean, these rounds, I think Smith has won, but... I don't think uh, they, you know, Salinas was entirely out of the out of the fight in any of these these rounds. Uh, but I mean, Smith is just getting stronger. It looks like and, and as Salinas is starting to starting to back I down do a little see bit. Smith slowing down just a tad bit, not a yes. lot, but just a little bit. She's slowing down. She has a lot of faith, a lot of a lot of confidence in her cardio, man, because she's still hitting with that same intensity. But. Are the shots feeling the same? Are the shots feeling as hard? I'm not too sure. And they Salinas both trade hooks there, and it looked like Smith's landed. And Salinas Smith really needs to take notice of this and start realizing that she's gassing out a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. That's all a fighter needs is just an inch. Well, and we were talking about what was probably the strategy in the corner. I, heard, I saw Salinas fire one of those left hooks to the body and I heard her corner say there you go so maybe that's what they're telling her to do go to the body slow her down and man Salinas Salinas gonna take a punch he's such a tough individual these guys are throwing down I will say this too India Smith has never been to the six six rounds all of her fights were four rounders so there might be something okay. there. there. You know, she may not handle the last two rounds uh, there as you well. Go. Nice combination from Salinas. Salinas got to start there. touching nice, her right here. Nice one-two combination upstairs to close out the, in the last 10 seconds of this round. Very, very interesting at the end. Very interesting at the end. Man. Well, as, as India Smith slows down, an opening came... An opening emerged for, for Amy Salinas. It looks like she she took advantage of it that round. Well, that was, was, but was it enough to win her the round? It's hard to say because India Smith say. looked like she was in control that first half of the round. It, yeah, I agree. I agree. I got to say, I got to say, I, I'm, I got 4 0 right now. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I have it the same way. I think that could have gone either way, but. Uh, but Salinas has to smell blood right now. She, I know she's. I know she does. Well, at this point, India Smith's about to go into the fifth round for the first time as a professional. That's going to be what I think Amy Salinas is going to have to bank on, that that this young fighter from Dallas, Texas, who's never been to the uh, six-round decision, or never fought a six-round fight before, is not going to be able to maintain this level of this intensity, this level of activity for six rounds. But even then, you win the next two rounds, yeah. and maybe you got a draw, but... 
it's is, not, is, that, it's, is that enough? It's not over till it's over. And you know what? These two rounds, they might as well treat them as championship rounds, as they call it. So Exactly. Well, and that's one thing I like about the six-round fights. You know, the four-rounder, sometimes, you know, you can, you can make one mistake and the fight's over. You know, I've seen good fighters who, in a four-round fight, get knocked down by really a nothing punch, but just had their, didn't have their feet under them. You know, one of those types of knockdowns where it was more of a balanced thing. And now they're down 10-8. And it's a hole that it's very hard for them to dig out of in a, in a four-round fight. In a six-round fight, you got more opportunity to fix those mistakes. But there seems to be an injury. India Smith is favoring her right hand. I don't know what happened. It looked like she blocked a punch and then favored her right hand. I don't yeah. know if she... I, don't yeah, know if anything, I think she was trying to point at her chest or something. I, yeah, that very well could maybe be the a, case. Maybe a wardrobe malfunction. That's possible. But she seems to be back... Now she seems, whatever it was, she seems to be recovered at this point. Again, as I was saying though, you know, in a six round fight, you got a little bit more uh, opportunity to, to fix a mistake you made early on. I think Amy Salinas has made some mistakes early on. I wouldn't say she made mistakes, but India Smith did everything right those early rounds. Yeah. This is where Amy Salinas, in the cha like you said, the championship round, she's gonna turn it around and both fighters are still fighting that phone booth, but Amy Salinas looking for those counter shots. Great pressure from Smith, though. She's not giving her any breathing room. Really not, no. She's not giving her an opportunity to get her shots off. Well, this begs the question, too, like, is it a distraction when you fight in front of your hometown? I mean, most fighters would love to fight in front of their hometown for their entire career, but at the same time, there's unique distractions that come with that. Maybe she very, just came... Very nice combination from Salinas right there at the end. I'm going to give that round to Salinas. I, I think so. I think she edged it out. Again, uh, you know, maybe she was looking for a knockout, and uh, this was one of those fights where she probably might have been better served looking to outbox, but right now... We're going into the, the last round of a very close fight, but I think India Smith is in, is ahead on the scorecards. This raises a very another interesting question. Ivan, if you're in her corner, do you tell her to try and go for the knockout when she's a fighter who's never knocked anyone out? I mean, do you tell her to take those risks and open herself up, or do you tell her to, to try and just win the round big? I mean, what do you tell a fighter who you doesn't know, have that punching power? I don't want to be all philosophical or anything like that. It depends. It depends what their game plan was, and it, dep it depends what their mission is. Um, just from the outside in, I would say, yes, you need to go for broke. You need to put this girl out, or she's going to walk away with the W. And, you know, it's funny you mention that. I remember uh, there was a, about 20 years ago, Pernell Whitaker fought a, a Cuban fighter who was trailing badly on the cards. Everybody who followed Pernell Whitaker's career knew he was not a knockout artist. And he basically is told, you need to knock this guy out. And the, the slickest boxer in boxing, just arguably the slickest boxer in boxing history, he turned into George Foreman and knocked the guy out. So, there you, go. you know, you never know. Maybe Salinas, uh, Salinas uh, might, be a, might have that little George Foreman in her that, uh, that comes out when the, when the chips are down. And that's what champions are made of. They dig exactly. deep. Exactly. They dig deep with most cats. Well, I'll say this, though. India Smith, I... If we were expecting those body shots to slow her down, if we are expecting the six round distance to, to slow her down, she's still fighting at a she, pretty good case, yep. pace. Amazing conditioning to keep up this intensity for this long from beginning to end. Very, very impressive. Again, this girl came to fight. She did, she really also, did. Also hungry to, again, to showcase that. Look, my record doesn't reflect how good I am. I'm way better than my record showing. And I'm just waiting for that one opportunity. And you know, really, as crazy as it sounds, but there have been a handful of really good fighters who started their career one and three. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think uh, Mike Weaver, the former heavyweight champ, I don't think it was quite one and three, but it was pretty darn close. It was something like uh, three and three that he started his career. Of course, Pacquiao. Pacquiao, course, I think, Pacquiao. started off, uh, off losses and he's yep. looking Pac at his legacy. Exactly. And, uh, and of course, uh, legendary Henry Armstrong. Uh, lost most of his early fights and then turned into one of the greatest fighters of all time. I so, think, so think. India Smith, uh, you know, one and three is is doesn't think, mean that you I can't. I think Smith is actually she might be slowing down or maybe just realizing like, look, I can use out the gas pedal a little bit. I don't know if that's what she's doing, but we definitely see just the difference in the volume right now. Salinas is just a little bit more aggressive, but Smith is still in her face, still game. 
Well, again, for a fighter who's lost in close decisions, I don't know if she would really want to step off the gas in the last yeah, round. I mean, you have a point. You have a point. What a great fight. That was what a great, a great fight. fight. These, two, these two women are warriors, savages. It was a very good performance for, for India Smith. Amy Salinas, I think uh, she shouldn't hold her head. She shouldn't hold her head off this performance. Another little audio problem there, but <laughs> you know the thing with Amy Salinas is, you know, really to be honest, when you're bringing a fighter up, you want to give them, you want to want them to see different things in the ring. You don't want to just put them in with fighters that are going to fall over and, and, and get, you know, get knocked out every every single time. And uh, and really to be honest, you don't have to build your fighter up to be an undefeated fighter to get to that world title fight. So I think Amy Salinas learned a lot in this fight. It's still, there. I mean, I think she won the last two rounds. So, I mean, you know, it's well, we'll, still, it's we'll still up in the air. It's in the judges' hands right now. So, right. of course, these are just our opinions. It goes down to the hands of the judges and what they say is what counts. Crowd here sounds like they very much think Amy pulled it off, and so. And the judges are taking a fair amount of time getting the decision. That usually means that that we've got uh, we've got a pretty close decision here. So. I think it's split. It very well could be. It very well could be. Like I said, I thought you know going in, it looked like a shutout after four. I thought Salinas won the last two rounds, and you yeah. know those first four rounds were, I'd say probably 60-40 for Smith. So, you know theoretically, a, a judge could see it, you know, 50-50 or 51-49 for uh, Salinas. So, yeah. we might have a pretty close fight here. And generally speaking, uh, you know, our, our the judges here in New Mexico do a good job, but it is still, you know, they're still going to hear the hear the crowd cheering for Salinas. That that's still they're still human beings, and that can influence a, a judge. Yeah, absolutely. She did, and she her fought her heart out. Two judges had it four to two, just as we did for India Smith. One judge had it four to two the other way. Again, you know those those first four rounds. I think Smith pretty clearly won them, but you know if you gave Amy Salinas every benefit of the doubt in that, it's certainly not unheard of for uh, for you know for Salinas to have gotten the nod on that. I I I think the decision was right, though. I'm not I'm not complaining about the decision at all. Uh, I, I thought those first four rounds, I think India Smith was pitching a shutout at her f after four, so he did a good job closing that gap, but I agree, I agree. get me a fight. There is some bad blood between the two. Derek Perez uh, feels that Dwayne Bond. I can look it up. Derek Perez. You know, it's like being for quite a six and zero since moving up. So, and the ring card girls are coming in, so that's yep. a pretty good sign that we're about to get the show started. Yeah, we're about to to reconvene here.
we are back in action with Isabel Garcia making her way to the ring now. Again, Isabel Garcia from Clovis, New Mexico. And she's got a tough assignment ahead of her as she takes on Stephanie Hahn. Looking confident. She I, think does, gonna be in. I think we're going to be in for quite a show right now. I think so too. And I think we're going to hear quite the uh, crowd response to uh, Stephanie Hans ring it. Good choice of song. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> okay. Las Cruces, New Mexico is. Less than an hour away from El Paso, Texas, where Stephanie's from, and they came out in full force here to support their stellar, stellar family of fighters. Her brother behind her, A.B. Hahn, who I had the good uh, fortune of seeing, seeing fighting his young amateur career against uh, local, local royalty off the trout. And he had a very, very good uh, professional career as well uh, fought with top rank and really had uh, some great right great fights uh didn't quite win the world title but certainly uh certainly made a name for himself Absolutely. and made a name for himself in the sport but he was a great fighter just to walk walk in front of him and having him in your corner you know it's like wow yeah how do you not get pumped Mexico in the house. Let's go. tell who the crowd is behind uh, the local girl well almost local girl like I said Las Cruces El Paso are next right next to each other and it sounds like quite a few fight fans from El Paso came up to here to Las Cruces to, to watch Stephanie Hahn fight uh, and Isabel Garcia came from just shy of five hours away in Clovis New Mexico on the border with Texas hometown of Buddy Holly and uh, there's been a couple of decent fighters coming out of Clovis so so I would ready. Garcia looking intense. And again, we talked about the the, the, the nerves and the the nerves and the uh, butterflies with your professional debut. And and both these fighters are making their pro debut. Stephanie Hahn may come from boxing royalty, but this is once she steps in the ring, she's by herself, and she's gonna have those same butterflies that you have when you're fighting your pro debut as as anyone else. But right now, she's looking good. She has a nice long jab that she's she's utilizing. Garcia's not, not not doing bad either though. I mean she's she's trying to cut the distance, gets in, throws an overhand right, doesn't land, but she seems like she has a she knows what she's doing in the ring. Let's put it that way. And when you're when you watch a professional debut, sometimes you don't know what you're getting, but this looks like a competent fighter. Stephanie though, you could tell that she grew up in a boxing family, and that's a beautiful jab. You definitely see Garcia's IQ. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a beginner IQ for sure. Exactly. Like you said, she does know what she's doing. Jennifer Hahn is just ready though. As soon as she steps in, as soon as Garcia steps in, Jennifer Hahn just pop, pop, pop. Stephanie, yes. Stephanie, forgive me. But you're right. I mean, that jab is 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 very Hahn-like. You know, it's very. I mean, really, to be honest, we could be watching a Jennifer Hahn here fight because that jab is is beautiful. She's pumping that jab beautifully. She's keeping her distance and. That was one of the things that made Jennifer Hahn such an effective world champion was she, she utilized her, her reach and she boxed beautifully. And right now, Stephanie's doing just that. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed. She's got a nice little right hand to, 
when uh, when Garcia does close the gap. Garcia, like like you said, though, very confident fighter. She's clearly somebody who uh, they didn't pick somebody up off the street uh, and Stephanie. throw a pair of throw a pair of boxing gloves on her. So they got a good opponent for Stephanie Hahn, but I think Stephanie Hahn did a pretty good job in that first round. Absolutely, it's that great awareness of distance by Stephanie. As soon as she got within range, she just started popping out. Pop, pop, pop. Very impressive, her her uh, her distance awareness. As soon as she got within range, she didn't hesitate. She shot out that jab, shot out combinations. Exactly. And that's, like I said, uh, after the first fight, when you watch a fighter's pro debut, you usually don't know if you're watching a future world champion, but you do know if you're not watching a future world champion. And right now, Stephanie Hahn is, I mean, she looks like all the part of a world beater. I mean, what we're seeing here looks like this could be competitive with a lot of fighters in the world rankings right now. So I would say that so far in round one, now keep in, keep in mind, a lot can go around. We, we got three more rounds to fight. I'm not I'm not coronating Stephanie Hahn just yet. She's Garcia has obviously shown that she can fight, fight and she's gonna, uh, she's in this fight, but, but so far, if you're in Stephanie Hahn's corner, you gotta be happy with what you see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Garcia, again, trying to close the gap. It looks like uh, Stephanie got a warning from referee David Rios. I'm not sure what that was for, but. And there. Counter punching from Han, but Garcia is finding a way on the inside. And that was probably the first mistake I've really seen either of these fighters make. Garcia saw an opening, came in, and then opened up her arms. And, and instead of coming in throwing a punch, she just kind of opened up her yeah. her arms and, and opened herself up for a counter shot. Jen, or Stephanie Han could have probably fired a nice right hand right there. Didn't didn't recognize it until it was too late. That comes with experience in the ring, but. They're both fighting. They're both fighting very effectively. Again, I just think you, you see the boxing IQ, you see the boxing uh, knowledge from Stephanie Hahn, and she's really utilizing it. And I, I really, to be honest, if, if, if Stephanie Hahn stood in front of her, and we, if, if she stood in front of her opponent, like we saw with the Salinas fight earlier, this might be a very, uh, uh, you know, a very back and forth brawl. But you know, Stephanie Hahn has that boxing IQ to to keep that distance and, and I believe so, yes. Right, and, and, and move, and she's just got great uh, great ring generalship as well and really utilizing the ring very well. Not saying she can't brawl, but why when you don't exactly. need to? Exactly, exactly. When you know you can just outbox the other person. So got a lot of fight to go, and Garcia looks very, very game. And the other thing too is, you know, sometimes when you see a professional debut, or a fighter making their professional debut, they, they run out of gas quickly. The excitement of the event, the fact of the matter is the first time you fight professionally, some, you, you can never really properly uh, pace yourself unless you have, you know, hundreds of amateur fights or a lot of amateur fights, but sometimes it's just hard to pace yourself for that. And Garcia is still going strong here as we close the second round. So, you know, another thing I was looking for is could these fighters maintain that pace for, for the distance? And right now they're doing it, so. I don't think cardio or condition is gonna be an issue for either fighter, fighter right now. Well, we just passed the halfway mark, so I mean, at this point, yeah, neither of them look particularly winded. I, they look like they can do this. They both look like they could probably do a 10 round fight right Absolutely, now, so. Yes. Garcia's game, Garcia's trying to stand her face, but I know she's also she's also wary of the counter punching. Stephanie, Stephanie Hans looking extremely sharp, very, very laser-like, just ready, ready just to fire off, pop off shots the moment she gets within range. And this has got to be a, a uniquely frustrating fight for somebody like Isabel Garcia who comes in and, and you can tell that she's competent in the ring, so I've got no doubt she came into this fight thinking she was going to surprise a lot of people, but Stephanie Hahn is just making no mistakes, and that's one of she the things that, that's got to be uniquely frustrating for a fighter when your opponent is just not making mistakes that you can capitalize on. Well, again, like we talked about earlier, that's what makes a champion. That's a championship mindset. You got to stay focused no matter what, at all times. 
He's closing the distance a little bit better right there. And you know what was beautiful there was Stephanie Hahn, uh, that Garcia got inside of Stephanie Hahn's jab. She finally broke that broke that jab and got inside. And what did Stephanie Hahn do? She clinched. She clinched. Immediately exactly. ended that momentum. And that was just a very veteran move. Start going out, making sure she's not pushed out in the corner. One thing I like about Stephanie Hahn too is she's really got a very respectable right hand as well. And that right hand is, is it's not just she's pumping a jab and moving. She, she's got that right hand, she drops in, and she's been dropping it a lot more this round. Garcia seems to be slowing down. I don't know if it's fatigue or frustration. She jumps in there, tries to get inside again, but Stephanie Hahn clinches again. Could be a little bit of both. Well, if you're if you're Isabel Garcia, what do you, what do you think you you got to do at this point? You've got about a round I'd, I'd and like a round and some change, but I'd like to see a little bit more slips and just 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 get in there, just a little bit more slips off the jabs, off the crosses. Easier said than done for sure, from my perspective. But right. I'd like to see a little bit more slips and just get in there and just hit that body, work that body, and then work your way up. Well, and the only thing I, I can think of at this point, really, because. Isabel Garcia is fighting a very good fight. It's just that Stephanie Hahn is fighting a better fight. I, I, absolutely, yeah. And the only thing, and that's what makes this a uniquely frustrating fight. If I were a cornerman, I, I would, I wouldn't know what to say. I mean, you know, you try and try and keep doing what you're doing. Sooner or later, it's going to work. I mean, that's yeah. basically what you got to say. I guess the only thing I, I would maybe look at is try and jab your way in. And it's hard to jab with a, a fighter with such a, a laser-like jab. You can't out jab a jabber, and, and you, it's 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 a tough assignment. But right, you're falling right into her game plan like that. Exactly. I, I think you know if I may again, just just slipping, 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 body, 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 leading to the head, because it, it did look like she was just, from my perspective, head hunting just a little bit too much. Right. But uh, like you said, um, Han is just she's flawless right now. It really is. Well, I don't want to talk about Han's next fight before this fight is over, but I got to think that Team Han is now, they probably have a path towards a world title fight. They know how the business operates. They've, they've seen Jennifer's career and how it how it operated and how she got uh, positioned herself for that world title fight. I know Jennifer Han was a huge ticket seller in El Paso. They brought in Helen Joseph for that world title fight. Helen Joseph, I believe, was from uh, Ghana, Ghana or, or Congo. I can't remember exactly, but they brought her in to El Paso to fight for that world title fight, and I was there that night. It was a sellout crowd. Well, not quite a sellout, but it was a pretty good crowd. I think Stephanie Han, they, they would be looking at the same kind of same kind of uh, atmosphere for if, if they can continue this this continue her career down this path and get her into that position where they can fight a world title fight. I really think they can bring in an opponent uh, to fight a world title fight for her. But and, and when I when I look at this fight to say what can she improve on, undoubtedly you know there's there's things that her trainer are going to look at and say well we could probably done this differently or this differently, but. I gotta say, this is this is close to the perfect fight, man. And, and you know, I've been very observant of, of uh, Garcia. And like I'm saying, just the last few exchanges I've seen, she's getting in on the inside. All like 95, 98 percent of her shots are going toward the head. She's just head hunting. Right. You know, I'd like to see her go to the body more to set up those head shots. Very, very difficult because once you get on the inside, I think someone like Han, what does she do? She clenches up. Exactly. So, not an easy feat to accomplish for sure, but this is just what I'm seeing right now. Very, very game, Garcia. She's as tough as they come, you can tell. Han is just looking very sharp. Well, if I'm Isabel Garcia's team, I, I would look at talking to promoter Cedro Castillo, seeing about putting a fight on and Hobbs and Clovis and trying to build up a record because she certainly yeah. yeah yeah she certainly got a future in the sport too if she wants it. Absolutely. And the last 10 seconds of round four, I, I got Stephanie Hahn pitching a shutout. Both riders 
finishing off with swings. And they what a fight. Great performance. Great performance. Massive performance by Hans. I think the only criticism you could possibly uh, possibly give Stephanie Hahn is, is the one the one criticism Jennifer Hahn was had was she wasn't considered a big puncher. And there were people who criticized her punching power. Maybe you could say that Stephanie Hahn didn't get an opportunity to show her punching power in this fight, but it's kind of like you said, though. Why, why, why mess with something that's working? What she did there was a perfect performance. Why, why stand in there and try and trade bombs and get out of your fight strategy that's working so well? Yeah. But I mean, really, I mean that was that was a very well boxed performance. I think when you can touch someone and not get touched, why not? Right? Exactly. Yeah. That's. that's that sounds perfect to me. <laughs> so, exactly. And, and, and you know what? I mean, she's got enough power to keep her off of her because exactly. she respected her enough to just not barge in there recklessly and right. get caught with something serious. And I, I agree. I, I mean, I think she, the one thing I liked was that right hand. I could tell she had a little bit of a sting behind that right hand. And I think as her career progresses, we're going to see that right hand land on some, some people and, and realize that Stephanie Hahn does have some power on that right hand. Yeah. Both these fighters have a bright future. For I sure. do too. And I, I think we might be seeing Stephanie Hahn in a world title fight Absolutely. as well. I, I think that, you know, I said, I've said it twice before during this broadcast. Usually when you watch somebody's pro debut, you don't know if you're seeing a future world champ, but you, you may know if you're not seeing a future world champ. No, you know what? Throw that out. I think we're seeing a, a potential future world champ with Stephanie Hahn. I think that, you know, we can, we can, you, if she gets an, uh, she gets built along and, and gets a uh, it's about six or seven wins i think we could see her in a world title fight there, you know there's a strong possibility we could see these guys down the road oh, absolutely yeah we could both be, see these fighters fighting for a regional title or nabo or nabf title and but this was stephanie's night this was she shined she was more than ready for the decision and uh a little bit of a delay here i hope that doesn't mean we have a strange something strange going on with the decision but oh. you never know but yeah. <laughs> i doubt it I gotta say, if they don't give this to Stephanie Hahn, that may be the worst decision I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've seen some bad ones. Uh, Stephanie Hahn was the winner of the decision. I, I don't think that was ever in doubt. We didn't hear the scores, though, so I don't know if it was a shutout or what the scores were. I'd have to, I'd like to take a look at that and see the scores uh, before the end of the night, but I'm assuming it was 40-36. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe you could have... <laughs>
first say thank you to God and thank you for everyone that came out to support me. I know that my dad's gym, Hans Roy's Martial Arts, and my brother's gym, Hans Martial Arts, as well as all the El Paso Police Department officers that came here. <laughs> I truly appreciate your support and it means the world to me. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I think it was Larry Holmes or somebody said, uh, Philadelphia, if you drive through Philadelphia, you'll see the homeless guys. Uh, Nate and bobbing, bobbing and weaving <laughs> when they're when they're fighting in the streets. I mean, it's just it's it's, it's a in fight the blood. town. Yeah. In the blood. Philadelphia is the greatest fight town, arguably in America, probably in the world. So Andre Mack has been working out at a gym in Philadelphia. Right off the bat, that makes me think that this guy knows how to fight because if you don't know how to fight, you're not going to be in a boxing gym in Philadelphia. With that being said, there was talk about him. Uh, he, he had said that he was supposed to be fighting his, he was supposed to be fighting earlier. He was supposed to make his pro debut in Philadelphia. Andre. His, Andre. Andre, yeah. Andre was supposed to fight his pro debut in Philadelphia, but his trainer got uh, got arrested and charged with double homicide. So that kind of derailed his pro debut. So he took, he took this fight, but he's had an amateur career. He's had some amateur fights. And the interesting thing about it is the more I talk to him, the more I realize this guy has got some athleticism. This guy has got an amateur background. He seemed to be high, holding his cards close to his chest at first. Not really telling me a lot about his experience. He told me he was a, a, a football player, played a little college ball at Westland, then talked about his amateur background, and then when I asked him his record, he said, I don't really remember my record. But the, then he started describing some of his accomplishments uh, as an amateur. And I realized, wow, this guy, you know, very let, reserved. He, yeah, he's very reserved, but he's got some he's got some some accomplishments as an amateur boxer. He's from Philadelphia. Amateur amateur experience. I'm expecting this guy to be a pretty good uh, to put up a pretty good fight. And let's be honest, up until this point, everybody has fought a very good fight. We yeah. have not got anybody on this card who, who basically, you know, couldn't fight. Absolutely. People are voicing their game plans and the opposition trying to not right. tear from their game plan. So that only makes for a great fight for sure. Exactly. And Andre is flying out tomorrow from Back to Philadelphia. Jorge Tobar, 1 0, 1 knockout in the first round. Jorge Tobar has a, a solid amateur background as well. He is, uh, his first fight was a first round knockout back in July. And that was in Rio de New Mexico over Colton. Alfred. He's coming into the ring now, and uh, the El Paso native has got a lot of fans here in the audience today. Absolutely. four-rounder at least it was last time I, I I checked they may have moved it up to six round because it's now the co-main event but we'll find out here in just a moment Ladies and gentlemen, this is our co maybe we won't <laughs> Andre looking Ladies still fucked up not trying to get him paid not trying to get paid by the crowd
this is a really good stare down. I think I heard him say four rounds, so. Most pro debuts, of course, are four rounds, so I'm assuming it would be. I asked uh, Jorge Tovar, is it added pressure to, to be fighting in the co-main event? He had a great answer. He says, well, you know, I sold the most tickets. I'll be honest, listening to the crowd here, I, I can kind of hear that. He, he definitely sold a lot of tickets here. the bat, Tovar is reserved. Now Andre Mack, a little bit of, a little bit of fighting, a little bit more of an excitable style. Yeah, looking good, Mack looking sharp. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, definitely looking, uh, looking sharp, but that left hook to the body got the crowd excited. I don't know how much damage it did. Mack is slowing down just a little bit. Popping the jab. Well, Max started to keep his distance. You know, he kind of came out pretty strong, and now he's on the ropes, took another body shot. He's covering up. Nice left hook from Andre Mack, a left hook from the Philadelphia fighter. Who would have thought it? And he takes a knee, though. Body language changed. He looked very elusive, very confident, even in, in defense. And right away, he took a knee, so yeah. doesn't look good. That was very strange because he, he threw a left hook. It seemed like it it, it grazed uh, Tobar's Tobar's chin. Didn't look like he did a lot of damage, but it Felt seemed like he was turning like around that. and then down wow. again. You're right. The body language and uh, Andre Mack is. Uh, out to 10.1. He chose not to get up. You can't argue with the referee when you get up at 10, just after 10. You try and time it to get up at nine and a half, and you get up at 10 and one quarter, then you don't have any argument with the referee. Tobar, Tobar starts his career off very effectively. Two straight wins, two straight first round knockouts. And he's looking like a prospect definitely worth keeping an eye on. And I'm going to be honest, all that hyping up I did for Andre Mack before the fight uh, didn't really pan out. say this too. Tobar was going to the body pretty effectively. Yes. And those yes. body shots, those are the ones that hurt. That, as they say, those body shots come with interest. Exactly. Well, I gotta say, if I'm an El Paso fight fan, I would be pretty excited about what I've seen so far from several of the fighters on yeah. this card. Stephanie Hahn, Jorge Tovar, Mikey Tovar. I mean, we really have got some pretty exciting young prospects on the card. Good night for El Paso. Yeah. Again, Jorge Tovar with a first round knockout over Andre Mack. One minute, 25 seconds, two knockdowns in the fight. Andre Mack came in from Philadelphia and unfortunately for uh, Andre Mack came in to fight Jorge Tovar, a very well-rounded young super middleweight who fought
fought a very effective fight and uh, has got a lot of power behind his shots. And one thing I like about Tovar is he really knows how to go to the body. I mean, that was a pretty effective body attack. And I think, I really think the body attack is why we saw the knockout in the first round. I mean, he really relentlessly went to that body and that's, that, that was, I think, the reason for the knockout. And you can hear the crowd really is excited about this performance. Jorge to Tovar joked about beating the uh, co-main event and joke jokingly said, well, I said, sold the most uh, tickets, so. And you can hear it here, and, and if he keeps fighting like this, he's, he's gonna be in the main event in no time. I mean, these are some exciting performances and, you know, knockout sell fights. And uh, this was, uh, may not have been the most exciting knockout, but, you know, when you got 2-0 two, two and oh with two straight first round knockouts, that's a pretty good start to your career. Howard Tovar, remember the name. Tovar, this is your second pro fight. Both fights have been won by knockout. How do you feel? What do you do to train? Always going to the body. That's your style. Uh, yes, sir. I actually feel amazing. Uh, my, my fighters from Philly. I know they got a lot of boxers in Philly, but I'm from Chukotown, Texas, baby. And I want to thank all my fans, all my people. Mr. Tovar, we can only do one thing, and that's wish you nothing but success from this day forth. Best of luck to you and to all the team that has trained you ever since. Thank you very much. Yes, probably you should put your money on Dwayne Bonds, but this should be a good opportunity for us to gauge Dwayne Bonds further at 154, because Derek Perez has fought pretty much everybody in the Southwest. With that being said, Derek Perez is also coming into this fight with eight straight losses. Two 17 and one record, eight straight losses, and six of those uh, were by knockout, including four knockouts in his last four fights. Last four fights. So he is kind of moving in the wrong direction. Uh, things are, Square hasn't been going very well lately, and at some point he's really gonna have to get a big win here. He's really gonna have to really turn things around. But he says this is the fight where that's going to happen. Derek Perez is expressing a lot of confidence in this fight and says there's bad blood. He says there's bad blood between him and Bonds. And he, it all started, ironically enough, over Abel Navarrete. They were comparing uh, online. They were on the internet. They were arguing about the losses. And, and uh, Derek Perez took offense to Wayne, something Dwayne Bonds said about, about that, uh, that his performance against Abel Navarrete. Derek Perez responded with a, a comment that Navarrete knocked, knocked you out in worse fashion and also commented that his brother Gene Perez uh, did better than, than, than uh, Dwayne did against Abel Navarrete. And that started this war of words. And here we are in Las Cruces, New Mexico at the Pan American Center. Dwayne main Bonds event. versus main event. <laughs> Dwayne Bonds versus Derek Perez in a six round main event in the junior middleweight division. <coughs> Should make for quite a show. It should, and I say, I keep saying junior middleweight, and I'm looking at the weights. Dwayne Bonds, 147.8, just over the welterweight division. Derek Perez, 146.4. So really, you could just as easily say this is a welterweight. Yeah, fight. right. Now, I will say that Dwayne Bonds, I mean, his performance, he's, he started his own boxing gym. So, I mean, this is a guy who's really focused himself on the on the sport of boxing. And again, like I said, I mean, you know, winning six in a row, and he's got some pretty impressive uh, impressive wins over there. The win over undefeated Carlos Vialba was, was I think, a, a real big win for him. It really turned his career around. And, uh, you know, Derek Perez is a, he is a guy who gives 110%. So, this will... Give us an opportunity to kind of gauge how he's doing, what kind of, how he, how we, what we can expect from him as he moves forward. But I assume this is going to be his 10th win. Uh, there is a little discrepancy on his record. I've seen it listed as 10-3 and one. I'm showing on box rec at 9-3 and one. Whatever the case is, 
a win here, gets them a little bit closer to being in the in, in the discussion for fights for regional titles, for fights like an NABO title or an NABF title. Uh, I think if you get 15, 16 wins, if you're like 16 and three, you can start positioning yourself for one of those fights. And you get one of those regional belts, you get a WBC Continental Americas belt, you get a WBO Global uh, belt, you get a USBA belt, you're in the world ranking. So Dwayne Bonds is actually very close to positioning himself for that big fight that can put him in the world ranking. Again, 9-3-1, 10-3-1 against a 2-17 and 17 fighter. This is, this is, this, this is not uh, the championship game. Let's just put it that way. It's not the championship game, but it's going to be a very good uh, test for for this young team and as they move forward. You know what? We're they're both here, and anybody can get hit. That's right. You know, anybody can get touched. Uh, Derek Perez obviously has experience on his side, like you pointed out earlier. I don't think any. He's not going to show him anything he hasn't seen. This guy's seen it all. Um, that doesn't guarantee him a victory because when you're fighting someone like Bonds, who's got uh, so many victories in a row already, who has momentum on his side, that's a dangerous fighter right there. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be a great show. The fact that these guys are just aching to get at one another. Well, Dwayne Bonds' last two wins were against the, the normally durable, well, I... I shouldn't say normally durable, but uh, the opponent, uh, Avardo Alavaz. Alavaz, excuse me, <laughs> I apologize. I'm pulling it up on my, I'm pulling it up on box rec as we speak. And, uh, you know, he has an 11-31 record. Not a world beater, but, you know, ag against Wayne Bonds, you know, I mean, knockout in the second round, followed up by another knockout in the second round. Alavaz is, uh, you know, got 26 knockout losses though so you know knocking him out is is a good sign uh you know i mean if he struggled to win a decision then we'd start saying well you know <laughs> what's what's going on here but you know scoring a knockout in a fight that you're supposed to knock out and especially against a guy with 43 professional fights i mean you know that that experience still counts for something and when you're seven three and one eight three and one and you're fighting a guy with 40 professional fights uh, that that means a lot and to score a big knockout like that in the second round uh, it, it's very impressive for him <coughs> excuse me but uh you know he's fighting a guy in, in Derek Perez also a guy who gives 110 percent always fights you know a tough fight and uh, always gives it gives it his all I'm just pulling up uh, Alavise's uh, other opponents Alvarez, excuse me I'm mispronouncing his name, but I'm pulling up some of his other opponents just to kind of get a, a litmus test. And, you know, I mean, I mean, it looks like a kind of a who's who in the Southwest, uh, Southwest fighters. Joaquin Camarena, a very talented undefeated fighter out of Colorado. I remember him from, I remember uh, his father, uh, Donald Camarena, was a great fighter in his own right. And I just got handed a card from the, World Boxing Council, uh, a representative from the WBC. So you got some important eyes on this. You know, the there WBC is here in attendance to watch this fight. Uh, but uh, again, like uh, like I said, Dwayne Bonds knocked out a guy that uh, that Joaquin Camarena went the distance with. And Camarena is a very talented undefeated fighter who is in the NABF rankings. You know, Camarena, last I checked, was was ranked by the NABF. He's 14-0 with 13 knockouts. Only guy who went the distance with him was a guy Dwayne Bonds knocked out in the second round twice. So, again, you can't read too much into it. You've said it before, and it's very true. Just because fighter A beats fighter B doesn't mean that, and fighter B fights, uh, beats fighter C doesn't mean fighter A beats fighter C. But uh, it's a good win for Dwayne Bonds, and these are the kind of wins he's going to need to get. And it is. And, and uh, if he blows out Derek Perez, suddenly people start talking again. We've started talking about him as a pr uh, prospect again after that disastrous uh, stretch where he lost those fights and he's, he's he's fought his way right back into the discussion so a big win here and you know he really continues that discussion and pretty soon like i said we're going to start you know we, we we compared an opponent there and really to be honest that would be a great fight i'd love to see uh promoter cedric Cast uh, castillo get a you know reach out maybe we can get comedina down to new mexico i think that'd be a great fight i've seen comedina fight and he's a talented young fighter and he also has boxing in his blood 
like I said, uh, his father was a very talented fighter in Colorado. I covered his career quite a bit for FightNews.com, and uh, it's 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 this is an exciting exciting uh, time for Dwayne Bond's career. But everything we're talking about here, all of that NABF titles, all of those world rankings, all of those fights with Comedinas, all that goes out the window if he loses to Derek Perez. Yep. I mean, it, it's it's not even back to square one. It's it's back to square negative ten if you lose to Derek Perez because it's it's harder to bounce back from that. Losing to Abel Navarrete, a great fighter, you know, you you can be forgiven for that. Losing to Derek Perez, uh, you know, a tough guy, but a guy with 17 losses, it's a lot harder to bounce back from that. Well, we didn't have a a. a we weren't. We didn't have a break uh, announced, but it sure feels like we're in the middle of a uh, intermission. So yeah, it really does. something maybe when you got your everybody filming your ring entrance they know something we don't yeah I'm sure these guys are not going to disappoint like I said, I've seen Derek Perez, and, and I've never seen him win. Uh, you know, he's only got the two wins, but he always fights tough. He's always gritty, and you know, puts on a show. He puts on a show. You're right. And I've seen guys who the losses start piling up, and they start adding up, and next thing you know, they go down with a body shot and get. get uh, they go down from a body shot and get up at ten and a half. You know, they get stopped on a three knockdown rule on three mid-level knockdowns, you know. They start accepting that they're the opponent. They, they don't have that same heart to, to put on that, that same performance. I have not seen Derek Perez get to that point. He comes and he fights and he fights hard. You know, even if he loses the fight, you know, you don't see, a, you don't see him get blitzed in the first round with three, you know, kind of soft knockdowns. He comes and he goes out on a shield every fight, so. You gotta respect that in a fighter. You do, yeah. That's well, let's leave it out there, put it out there. Wayne Bonds coming out with the sombrero. Navarrete scored a first-round knockout over 
Derek Perez, and he scored a second round knockout over Dwayne Bonds. And that's what kind of led to this fight. They started jawing about their performances and, and uh, getting online and arguing back and forth online about about the who, who looked worse, and, I guess. And, and uh, now we're here. Now we're here. For the School of Hard Knocks Championship. Introducing first at my left, he weighed in at 146.4 pounds. He is a bare knuckle champion, School of Hard Knocks MMA champion, hailing from Belen, New Mexico, with 20 professional fights. Put your hands together for Derek Rage Pettis. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He is the American Boxing Federation champion, weighing in at 147 pounds, with a record of 10 wins, three defeats, one draw, seven of those wins by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from El Paso, Texas, DJ El Cucuy Negro Bonds. And at the sound of the bell, the referee in charge, Rocky Burke. Gentlemen, keep your guards up at all times. When I say break, take a step back without punching. In case I knock down, go to the furthest neutral corner. Don't come out of the neutral corner till I say box. Good luck to both of you. Give me a good, clean fight. Shake hands. I was saying earlier, uh, while we were talking, one of the representatives, one of the people here in, 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 this, in the audience, in attendance, uh, is a representative from the WBC, and he handed me his business card. And uh, the WBC has somebody here to see Dwayne Bond. So, I mean, this, this is a, that's like a scout, an NFL scout coming to your college game. You know, a good best foot forward. Exactly. A good performance from Dwayne Bonds, and, you know, he could find himself in that WBC Continental Americas fight. But Derek Perez jumps on Perez Dwayne Bonds. Perez is coming out strong. Yeah. He's coming out assertive. But perfect le uh, counter left hand from Dwayne Bonds, and he's timing that very well. I'll be honest, Derek Perez looks a little slow in this. I've seen him fight before. He's looking a little slow. He's a bit of a... He's starting fast, but he's, he's open for those shots. Nice. Nice straight pass for Bonds. But again, you know what? I mean, Derek Perez, you got to give it to him. He's coming out swinging. Another right hand, and you know what? I mean, left. Or excuse me, left hand. You're right, correct. That, that counter left hand. I'm sorry, that, I, I, that southpaw stance is, is even distracting. You can't take too many more of those lefts, man. He's really got to address right. that. He's a tough guy, but he is, yeah. you got to be smart. Right. Because Bonds right now is sniping. Bonds is just waiting, waiting, and firing off. Well, and really, this gives Bonds an opportunity. Oh, get your perfect left hand. Not getting up. And that was an ugly up. knock knockdown. And the doctor is on the ring apron, and it's over. It is over. Well, you were saying you can't, you, you can't keep walking into those shots, and, and you were right. I mean, he was open for it. Dwayne Bonds fought the perfect fight. You know, he was counter punching. He was looking for that opening because it was there, and then he took advantage of it, landed the perfect counter left, and. It was a, a highlight reel knockout there. A form of respect right now after Bonds knocks him out. You know, all the chit chat before. It don't matter because afterwards, you know, you just want to shake your opponent's hand. You got to respect that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's almost like he was banking on 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 Perez's aggressiveness. You know, he was just waiting for it. He knew that's what, what was going to happen. He just had to weather a little bit of a storm, if you will. And he was just firing off those lefts at will. Well, you know, to be honest, I mean, we were talking about this in a positive light with Perez. You know, he always goes out on the shield. I mean, a 2 and 17 fighter fighting a, a, a 9 or, or 10 and 3 fighter or 9 and 3 fighter, you know, usually they're, they're a little bit they're a little bit cautious. They know they're they know that they're the underdog. They know that the cards stacked against them. Yeah. Derek Perez came out here swinging for the fences 
and leaving himself open for those counter shots. Wayne Bond, to his credit, recognized that early on. He's like, hey, this guy's coming out swinging, swinging heavy punches, leaving himself open. Let me just step back and wait till I get that perfect, perfectly yeah. timed shot. And he got it about a minute in, and he got a few of them. Yeah, and, and Abel Navarrete, if you're watching this, I mean, you had a pretty, you started this fight, but that was one, one heck of a highlight reel knockout uh, for to, to end this uh, end this rivalry. And, you know, Dwayne Bonds, before the fight, said he, he had no ill will. It was just, you know, they were chatting online. Uh, Derek Perez was kind of the one who was sort of hyping it up, said there's a little bit of bad blood for the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, Dwayne went over and uh, told, uh, you know, Derek and congratulated him. And, but I, I got to say, I, I think Derek was just a little too brave in this fight for his own good, you know. I mean, he came out swinging heavy. I, I think, you know, the southpaw stance gave him some trouble. And... Uh, yeah, that, that counter right, he was just there for it. He didn't have too much of an answer for that left cross. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, you saw the outcome. He was just eating them one after the other, man. <coughs> but, uh, you know, props to him. He came out. He obviously was not scared. He was trying to enforce his will in the beginning. Like you said, you kind of really have to just think about your health from here on out. If you're the commission, should you want to see this again? I hate to say it, I like Derek Perez, he's a good fighter. He's earned his, he's earned my respect as a professional fighter because he's always gone out on the shield, but at some point I think maybe the commission might wanna might, might wanna look at look at that and maybe his team might wanna say, hey, you know what, it's been a good career. There's no no shame in it, but uh, yeah. you know, you don't have anything left to prove. As I said, we had the WBC here in attendance, and uh, Dwayne Bonds really impressed in front of the scouts. I mean, he really got the, the impressive win that he needed. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, at one minute, 50 seconds of the first round. Derek Perez do this uh, after other fights. He'll raise his opponent, and, and you know he's, he's a really classy guy, a really nice guy, a real tough guy. But yeah, this was uh, this was that was that was a pretty DJ Bonds. Another guy. exciting boxing match. You bring it all when it comes to boxing. You've trained hard. You made the weight. What's next for you? First off, I have to thank God for giving me this opportunity to be here. I want to thank everybody for coming out, showing support. Uh, I want to thank my my team. I want to thank Miss Fit and also School of Hug Knock Promotion for giving me a chance to do the, to headline this show. Um, I forgot what the question was. You know, I'm just taking these fights by experience, so uh, I don't know what's next. I just got to talk to my team and see what we do next. Awesome. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a round of applause for your champion, DJ El Cucuy Bonds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having been a part of this boxing event this evening. School of Hard Knocks promotion thanks you and looks forward to bringing another boxing match like this one to the Sun City or to the city of Crosses in Las Cruces. For that, we thank Mr. Isidro Castillo and all his staff and everyone who made this possible. If he didn't do well, you know, it, it could have, it could have uh, kind of stifled his momentum, even with the win. Instead, he's raised his momentum. His, his, the momentum has gone up even higher because that was a picture-perfect highlight reel knockout. That was the kind of win that really sets sets you apart. Gr a great win for Dwayne Bonds. Great win for a lot of the fighters on the card. All the fighters on the card. This was an exciting night of fights. 
And we want to thank the Athlete and Me TV and all of you watching on Facebook and on pay-per-view. We hope you enjoyed the card and uh, be sure to check out our next uh, pay-per-view event on Athlete and Me TV. I'm David Finger and with me is Ivan Rios. We want to both thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed the fights.